Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Ready Precision. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at another feature in Niagara and another one that you should be using if you do any work in a supervisor. And that feature is Niagara Provisioning. Niagara Provisioning lets you take uh, specific actions on your stations from your supervisor all automated and batch operated from the supervisor itself. You can set them on schedules, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Um, you can run one-offs. You can set up uh, templates that you maybe would need to reuse in the future. Um, a lot of possibilities using Niagara Provisioning. And in this video, we're specifically going to be looking at how you can make use of provisioning for backups. It's probably the number one reason why you should be using provisioning. If nothing else, you should be backing up all of your individual JACE stations up to your supervisor and uh, keeping them there as another place for the backups uh, to be stored and kept safe. So let's jump into Niagara and get started. All right, so you can see we are in our supervisor station now. This is just our demo supervisor. If you played it all with a demo supervisor, that's where I am uh, going to be doing this. And first thing that we're going to do is open up our palette, and we're going to look for provisioning. It's a little bit deceivingly named, thankfully. Provisioning is at the beginning, so we can find it uh, pretty quickly. So Provisioning Niagara is the uh, palette that we're looking for. And inside that palette, we've got a bunch of different things. Um, if you have a newer uh, supervisor that was created from one of the Niagara 4 uh, templates when you go to create a station, so if I was to go up here and say New Station, and this Supervisor Station Windows if you use that, you likely have these two pieces already added into your station. But just for your education, let's take a look at what they are. Um, the first of which is the batch job service. So that is going to live underneath your services container. And mine is here, the batch job service. Not really much going on here except for... Um, we're defining the alarm class that all of our provisioning related alarms are going to come in through. So good thing to note, um, if you wanted to use something other than the default alarm class, you probably should just to make your life easier. Um, you would do that here. The next piece that you need for provisioning to work properly is the provisioning uh, NW extension. This goes in your Niagara network. So if I drill down here into my Niagara network, you can see it's already in there for me. Um, but if it wasn't for you, you would just drag this into your Niagara network and uh, be off and running. Next, we're going to expand uh, one of our JSONs that we want to provision against. We want to run these jobs on. And uh, for that, I'm going to expand this uh, JSON here that is in our office. And the way provisioning works, it actually makes use of the platform connection uh, as well as your Fox connections to your uh, individual JSONs. So you want to make sure that your platform connection is set up and working properly. And you can see for mine, I've got the username and password in here, but I'm getting a uh, an error message. And that error message, if um, you've done, done any of this stuff uh, a bunch of times, you've probably run into this error message, and it's saying that it failed certificate validation. Um, because we're using a self-signed certificate, I have to approve that certificate up here at my supervisor. So I'm going to go into Platform and Certificate Management, going to log in and I'm going to go to my allow hosts and then you'll see here this uh, Niagara 4 certificate 5011 we know that's for uh, our platform connection and I'm just going to hit approve and we're good to go there now I go back to my platform connection right click do a ping and we are good to go so that's our basic configuration and setup process. Obviously, if you had a bunch of JSONs that you wanted to run this on, all of them would need to have the platform uh, username and password set and that certificate approved um, if you're using a self-signed certificate. Next step, we are going to run a one-off job. So just a single job that maybe um, you don't need to worry about saving for the future. Um, 
and we're going to do that by opening up our provisioning extension here and this is sort of our main user interface for doing anything with provisioning uh, it looks like this so at the very top we can choose whether or not we want to generate alarms when we have issues on any of our steps or any of our jobs that get run at uh, stations and then in this top section is where we define the work that needs to be done on our uh, stations downstream from the supervisor. So if I hit the add button, you'll see there are a ton of options here for uh, jobs that we can do, uh, things that we can do at these JSES. We can install software, we can add users, we can run robots, um, we can remove users, we can set up certificates, and we can also, like I mentioned before, do backups. So I'm just going to, for the sake of uh, ease here, I'm just going to run a backup on this. And then I'm going to choose my station I want to run against. I only have one uh, connection that's up and running at the moment. So we're going to use it on that. And then we're going to hit run. And it's going to go off and it's going to do its thing on each of the individual stations that we chose. And it's going to run each of those steps on those stations. We could set multiple steps. So I want you first to do a backup and then I want you to do a bunch of these other things so that you're covering yourself in case something doesn't work properly or you screwed up the steps in some way. You could roll back. Um, a lot of options here for that. And uh, this will take a moment or two to run through and when it's finished we'll come back in and I will show you where these backups live and we'll run on to the next step. Alright our job is complete we can tell that by the checkbox here and then at the very top our uh, progress one of one 100% and our state is success. So if I hit the double arrows here on the right we can see exactly what went down on this particular job. We backed up and we wrote that distribution back up to this particular path. If you're all familiar with uh, modifying your login pages uh, for Niagara, you know these double arrows indicate protected user home, which is the directory above the station that we're typically used to seeing from within Niagara. So if I go into my Windows File Explorer now and we navigate to our particular install of Niagara and I'm, we're going to the daemon user home because we want the station that's actually running and we go into our stations and then the station itself this would be considered our protected uh, station directory. And in that, we can see that we have a provisioning Niagara folder now. And in that, we have some station data. And then we have our individual stations. So in my case, I have my Brody office. And then in that, we have a backups folder. And then we have all of our backups that we've done through provisioning uh, are kept here. We can do some work to make sure that we don't overload this directory with too many backups. We'll see that in a little bit here. But for now, this is where those files are going to live. So next step, we did a one-off job. Now we want to do what's called a prototype job. This is a job that maybe you save and reuse uh, and continue to use. You could schedule it or you could just keep it there so that you could run it again in the future manually if you wanted to. Um, and to do that, we're going to use this Niagara Network job prototype that's in the provisioning Niagara palette. And uh, for my sake, I'm going to create a new folder here and I'm just going to call this uh, backup job underneath my config. And then I'm going to open that up and I'm going to throw in uh, this job prototype and I'm going to call this uh, backup job prototype and then we're going to double click to go in. It looks identical to what we saw before except now you'll notice at the very bottom we have a save button and then we also have an another, another uh, view here that we'll get to in a moment. First I'm going to set up like we did before. I'm going to say backup stations and then I'm going to say on that one particular JACE that's connected, I'm going to do a save. 
And then if I go over to this prototype job list, we, we can see we have this retention policy. This is super handy if you're doing backups because it allows you to uh, define how many backups you want to keep. Depending on the size of your supervisor and the number of JSONs that are coming up to your supervisor, you could very quickly overload your storage and keep too many backups without changing this retention policy. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep a limited number of exceptions per, uh, executions per device, and I'm going to set this at the default. Um, I want to keep five successful executions, and uh, we'll keep one unsuccessful execution uh, per device as well. The piece underneath that, this policy enforcement uh, frequency, that basically defines how often uh, this retention policy is going to get run. Uh, in this case, you probably don't need it to run every hour, but we'll leave it at that um, for now. We'll hit save, and now we are good to go to run this job. If I go back to my other view, we can run this manually now by hitting the Run Now button, just as, just as we did on the one-off jobs. And it'll go off and run exactly as we uh, ran it previously. So I'll come back once this is all completed, and then we'll get to probably the um, piece that you're really going to want to use, which is scheduling this prototype job so that it runs at a specific interval so that you have automated backups that you don't even have to think about that are going up to your supervisor. So I'll be right back once this is done. All right, our job is complete and we can see the same status indications that we saw in the one-off job. If I go to my arrows, you can see it's saved to the same place as well. So the last step here is if I go back to my backup job folder, we can see that we have a slot here that we can write to, which is called submit job. It's basically how we're going to trigger our job from a schedule. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to pull out a trigger schedule from the provisioning Niagara palette. It is just a regular trigger schedule, so you could pull it from the schedule palette as well. But uh, we'll call this uh, backup job schedule. And then We'll go in here and we'll define how often we want this to happen. In my case, uh, I'm going to say I want this weekly. And so I'm going to say every Sunday, uh, any day, any month, any year. And we can see that's going to run every Sunday now. And then we also need to define a time. So over here on the right, we'll say like 2 a.m. Add in that time. Hit save. And then if we go back to our folder, we can now see that our next trigger time is going to be on the 5th of January at 2 a.m. That's Sunday at 2 a.m. So now we just need to link this up, and we're good to go. Now our backup job will run every Sunday, 2 a.m., and we'll only keep five uh, backups for each of our individual JSAs so that we have uh, a couple different uh, versions of them to fall back on. And um, we're now doing this backup at a different location, which is always good. Um, and we have a lot of flexibility here. Uh, like I mentioned, this provisioning stuff, there's a ton of different uh, jobs that you can do, uh, scheduling things as we're doing here with our backups, um, really, Super, super flexible, and um, even you know basic configuration tweaks. If you needed to uh, do it across, you know, a hundred JSONs, you could very easily do that from the provisioning service. So, be sure to check out uh, that and set your backups up from your supervisor if you're doing a bunch of JSONs from a supervisor. Actually, if you, even if you're just doing like one or two JSONs from a supervisor, you really should be making use of this because um, all it takes is for it to save you once and it's it's worth the time and effort involved and very likely it will save you. So as always, thanks for watching. Uh, you can check us out 
on our website, birdieprecision.com, and stored at birdieprecision.com. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below if there's anything particular to provisioning that you'd like to see in the future. And um, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.